The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five, he said. Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my, God, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant, and gathering where you did not sc scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant, so you know that I harvest where I did not plant, and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Over the next many weeks, we're going to hear about this, this theme of staying awake and staying alert. Um, and so I don't, want to, I don't want to harp on it too much too early, but suffice to say that the church is very intentional about sort of setting this theme at the end of ordinary time as we come to uh, the Feast of Christ the King, at the end of ordinary time, and then straight into Advent. It, it really, you would think, oh, the end of one year and the beginning of a new year, that it would be like this, this hard kind of shift, this massive jolt into a different direction, but actually flows very smoothly, uh, which kind of might not always seem um, as intuitive to us, but it, uh, it's rather beautiful the way that the liturgical cycles, is kind of circular in that way. It just flows naturally right into itself. So we'll get plenty of opportunities to talk about that staying awake thing. One of the ways that we can be staying awake, uh, I think, is to pay attention to our work. If you look at that woman who's described in Proverbs today, um, she is really a great steward of her abilities, of her intelligence, of, um, she's a good worker, right? She's, she's paying attention to what's going on around her, 
she really spends herself in service of her family. Um, she invests well in this, this field that she might buy in order to plant a vineyard. Um, and so I, I wanted to dwell a little bit on that theme of work. Very often, uh, we can associate work with something that's laborious. It's something that can be burdensome. Um, it's something that can, can cause suffering or, or discomfort in one way or another. But it's important for us to remember that work is, first of all, a good. It's not always easy, right? Um, but if we remember that work existed in the garden before the fall, Adam was charged with the upkeep of what? The garden. He was a gardener. His job was to exercise that dominion that was given to him to keep order and to bear fruit. But then after the fall, we see that work changes. It does become harder. Right? That you will till the earth by the sweat of your brow. Right? Now there's something different about work. It's not just this joyful thing that has ease. It's something that costs us a little bit more, the work does. But there's still a good that remains there. It doesn't mean that work has become an evil. It doesn't mean that work is something that we should just avoid. It doesn't have to be something that's just uh, a consequence of sin or something like that. Even in a society without sin of any kind, we would still all be obligated to sort of care for creation and for each other and for ourselves. Um, and that God is the one who is the creator of all. That the, everything that's worthwhile work produces something. It, it is creative in a sense, even if it's not necessarily artistic. It's still creative in the sense that it has this, uh, it's a share in God's creative action. That the word collaborator comes from co-labor, right, to work with. That God invites us to his very own workbench. And that's, uh, that's a privilege. Right? To think about the gifts he's, he's given us, the interests that he's given us, the abilities that he's given us, the intelligence that he's given us, and to bring all those things side by side with God to help make the world something that is fit for human dignity, I think above all, um, to make it a place that is fruitful so that people might eat, that they might enjoy comforts, that they might enjoy beauty, um, the intellectual work that helps lead us into truth, the kind of service of others that, that really is a, a, just a, a beautiful and loving expression of the goodness of God. And so I think what I, what I would like to kind of propose to us tonight is that the work that we do, although it can be, you know, it, it might not always be as enjoyable as leisure. It might not always be as comfortable as the couch. Um, that it's, uh, it really is an awesome thing that we can integrate into our spirituality. I would say most especially as Catholics. Right? If Catholic means universal, right, to be a universal Christian, kata holos, according to the whole, to take those Greek parts, that it's the whole of creation, it's the whole of our human experience that has a place to be integrated into our spirituality and our worship. And so that as we stand with God at his workbench, helping shape the world into his image and likeness, that we bring all of that then here to this workbench that it is in union with the altar of sacrifice, that at whatever work we might do that God has called us to, that if we are intentional, if we are intentional about bringing him there with us and meeting him there, if we are intentional about offering our efforts for his glory, for the edification of others, for the building up, of the world and of the kingdom of God within the world for the betterment of ourselves and our lives and the lives of our families, that it becomes something that is very similar to worship. It is something that becomes 
worthy of being offered as a sacrifice. We don't offer things to God in sacrifice that are bad. We offer things to God in sacrifice that are in and of themselves essentially very good. In fact, the best of things. So even if you... Even if your job is to work on an assembly line and to press out bumpers in Detroit, or to work on an assembly line and put this screw in that hole on every machine that comes by, right? you might not be able to take the top 10% of your produce and offer it on the altar of sacrifice. But what you can do is you can offer the labor that you've spent, you've given yourself to this process. Some of the most meaningful Fruits of that labor might be found, firstly, in a paycheck. You might say, I'm not doing this because I love it, Father. I'm doing this because I need it. That's fine. There's dignity in that. Because there's this sense of, I'm giving myself to this company, corporation, to this effort, whatever, this service, in order that I might put a roof over my head and feed my family. That is it a dignified and good and beautiful and loving and virtuous thing. Whether or not it becomes something that's integrated into our spiritual life, whether or not it's a place where we can encounter the living God is dependent on us. It depends a lot on how we approach it. It depends a lot on how we engage with it. If we go, oh God, another 200 bumpers today. Clunk, clunk. Clunk, clunk then that's probably all it'll be worth. But if every time we think about the person who's going to be riding in that automobile who's going to be a little bit safer, if we think about, if, if we allow something that is repetitive and maybe even a little mundane, to allow our minds to engage in some meditation and to some contemplation and to conversing with the Lord throughout the day, um, or whether your work is of a high degree of intellect that needed years of training to get you there and your level of expertise. Even if it's not something that feels mundane that can allow your mind to kind of go into two places at the same time, it involves all of your focus that at the end of that day, that when you get into your car before you go home, you can put a little image on your dashboard and make it a little altar of offering to the Lord. Lord, I've done all this today and I want it to be for your glory. If there's anything where I fell short, I want to offer it. I want to ask for your forgiveness. For anything that I did that was, that was good, that you were pleased with, I offer it to you, Lord. You know, please use this whole process to make of me a more ardent follower and lover of your son. You know? How many different ways could we find if we were creative about it to make our labors, whatever they be, in the vineyard of the Lord, for some big high dollar corporation, some uh, highfalutin, um, I don't know, intellectual pursuit to being like Adam, a, a gardener of fruits and vegetables and flowers. How is it that we can encounter the Lord in those places? Tonight, as we approach the altar of the Lord, I just ask you to think about what maybe you worked with God to create this week and to make of that thing an offering to him. And maybe if, you've, if it's something that you'll be doing again this week, to ask him how you can encounter him more deeply there.